George Jacob Jung, born August 6, 1942, nicknamed Boston George and El Americano, is an American former drug trafficker and smuggler who was a major figure in the cocaine trade in the United States in the 1970s and early 1980s. Jung was a part of the Medellin cartel, which is responsible for up to 90% of the cocaine smuggled into the United States. He specialized in the smuggling of cocaine from Colombia on a large scale. To continue learning the story of George Jacob Jung, then keep watching until the end of the video. Also, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to like and hit the subscribe button. Now without further ado, let's get started. George Jung was born to Frederick and Erminalia Ni O'Neill Jung in Boston, Massachusetts and raised in Weymouth, Massachusetts. Though Jung did not excel academically, he was a star football player and was described by his classmates as a natural leader. His first arrest was by an undercover police officer for solicitation of prostitution. After graduating in 1961 from Weymouth High School, Jung went to the University of Southern Mississippi. He studied for a degree in advertising but never completed his studies. Jung began recreationally using marijuana and sold a portion of everything he bought to break even. In 1967, after meeting with a childhood friend, Jung realized the enormous profit potential represented by smuggling the cannabis he bought in California back to New England. Jung initially had his stewardess girlfriend transport the drugs in her suitcases on flights. In search of even greater profits, he expanded his operation to flying the drugs in from Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, using airplanes stolen from private airports on Cape Cod and professional pilots. At the height of this enterprise, Jung and his associates were reportedly making $250,000 dollars a month, which is an equivalent to $1.6 million in 2020 inflation rates. In 1974, Jung was arrested in Chicago for smuggling 660 pounds or 300 kilograms of marijuana. He had been staying at the Playboy Club, where he was to meet a connect who would pick up the marijuana. The connect was arrested for heroin smuggling. However, he informed the authorities about Jung to get a reduced sentence. After arguing with the judge about the purpose of sending a man to prison for crossing an imaginary line with a bunch of plants, Jung was sent to the Federal Correctional Institution in Danbury. In March 1974, during his marijuana trafficking sentence, Jung's cellmate was Carlos Leder Rivas, a young German-Colombian man who introduced Jung to the dominant and powerful international drug trafficking Medellin cartel. In return, Jung taught Letter about smuggling. In April 1975, when Jung and Letter were released, they went into business together. Their plan was to fly hundreds of kilograms of cocaine from Pablo Escobar's Colombian ranch to the US, and Jung's California connection, Richard Barrile, would take it from there. Though only a middleman, Jung made millions off the operation. He came up with the idea to steal single-engine airplanes for transportation and charge $10,000 per kilogram, with five planes going from Colombia to California, carrying 300 kilograms per plane. This equated to $15 million per run for Jung. In the 1970s, Jung was earning $3 million to $5 million per day. To avoid the need of laundering his earnings, he kept his money in the National Bank of Panama. By the late 1970s, Letter had effectively cut Jung out by going straight to Burial. Jung continued to smuggle, however, reaping millions in profits. In 1987, Jung was arrested at his mansion on Nosset Beach near Eastham, Massachusetts. With his family in tow, he skipped bail, but quickly became involved in another deal in which an acquaintance betrayed him. With Escobar's approval, Jung testified against Letter. The latter recently extradited, and Jung was released soon after. After working some clean jobs, Jung began working in the drug industry again. In 1994, after reconnecting with his old Mexican marijuana smuggling partner, he was arrested with 1,754 pounds or 796 kilograms of cocaine in Topeka, Kansas. He pleaded guilty to three counts of conspiracy, received a 60-year sentence, and was incarcerated at Otisville Federal Prison in Mount Hope, New York, then was transferred to Federal Correctional Institution La Tuna in Anthony, Texas. According to the Federal Bureau of Prisons website, Jung was most recently serving time in the Federal Correctional Institution in Fort Dix, New Jersey, with a scheduled halfway house release date of June 2, 2014. Though he completed his halfway house and was fully released from custody on November 27, 2014. Two years after his release in 2014, Jung was arrested for a parole violation on December 6, 2016. 
Sources close to Jung said in an interview that he had been arrested for making a paid promotional appearance that had been arranged by his manager, but not by his parole officer. In September 2014, Jung contributed to Heavy with T. Rafael Semino, nephew of film director Michael Semino. Heavy is a fictional story that details how Jung escaped from a Cuban prison and fled to Guatemala. After being released from prison in 2014, he began patching up his relationship with his daughter, Christina Sunshine Jung, but it has since fizzled in part, he says, because his daughter can't forgive him. Christina was raised alone by her mother, Mirtha Jung, and is now a businesswoman, writer, and poet. Christina's 19-year-old daughter, Athena, died in an auto accident in January 2021. When the infamous cocaine smuggler George Jung returned home to Weymouth, he wasn't sure what kind of reception an elderly former cocaine smuggler could expect when he turned to the suburban street where he grew up more than half a century ago, but he had a guess. I didn't know if I was going to get stoned, literally, or be told politely to leave town. Jung, fresh off a nine-month jail stint for a parole violation, said as he sipped from a bottle of non-alcoholic beer at a restaurant near the Hinga Mud Flats where he would dig clams as a kid. It was the complete opposite. A former Weymouth High School football player who went on to make millions of dollars running drugs for a ruthless Columbia cartel, Jung received nothing but a warm welcome as he returned to his hometown for the first time in more than 30 years. Unlike his past visits to Weymouth, which frequently drew the attention of the FBI. The 75-year-old Jung was now trailed by a film crew, producing a series about the life of a man who once claimed to have played a role in smuggling more than 80% of the cocaine consumed in the US. Jung, known as Boston George or El Americano, depending on which side of the Colombian border you're on, sat down for an interview recently while taking a break from filming at a Wahlburgers restaurant, part of a retail complex that has sprung up on the site of what was once a defunct naval shipyard when Jung was a boy. The former smuggler, still wearing his trademark long hair down to his shoulders, appears to have aged surprisingly well for a man known to consume impressive quantities of alcohol and cocaine in his heyday, much of his own supply. Unrepentant about how he lived his life, Jung tends to avoid answering questions directly, preferring to spool out pearls of wisdom gleaned from decades spent evading authorities and maximizing profit, both with mixed success. In my business, there's no such thing as getting out. Jung, who was often behind bars at state and federal correctional facilities, said when asked about his release from jail two months ago, it's part of my life. The series Boston George is the latest in a number of money-making ventures, including merchandise and a self-publishing book. He's also helped by the enduring popularity of Blow, a 2001 biopic starring Johnny Depp that told the story of a college marijuana dealer who rose to become an international drug smuggler, rubbing shoulders with Pablo Escobar, the famed Colombian drug lord and narco-terrorist. There's something for everybody in it. Advice, betrayal, love of a parent, loss of a parent, broken dreams, said Jung, a fan of the movie who says he has kept in touch with Depp over the years. It's a lesson plan for life. For George Jacob Jung, that life started out August 6th, 1942. Jung grew up in the 1950s in a house on Weymouth's Abigail Adams Circle, a quiet residential loop where he would make money as a boy delivering copies of the Patriot Ledger. He went to Weymouth High School where he played on a football team as a fullback and graduated in 1961. The yearbook that year lists his academic track as business administration. Jung, who admits to being a screw-up in school, did a brief and unsuccessful stint in college before moving out to Manhattan Beach, California, where he started a marijuana business that would eventually get him arrested in Chicago with 660 pounds of marijuana in two steamer trunks, according to Blow, a 1993 book by Bruce Porter that inspired the movie of the same name. While serving a sentence in Connecticut, Jung met Carlos Letter, a Colombian who introduced him to cocaine, then only just becoming popular in the US. The result was a lucrative partnership that introduced Jung to a life of drug lords, rock stars, risky drug running operations, and incredible wealth. In Porter's book, Jung claimed to have more than $100 million. That all ended when Jung was arrested again and sentenced in 1985 to 15 years in prison, a sentence that was later reduced to four years after Jung agreed to testify against Letter, who was by then a drug lord in his own right. When Jung was released the following year, he claimed to be retired from the drug business. 
But six years later, in 1995, Jung was arrested again at his Cape Cod home after receiving a truckload of Mexican marijuana. In 1997, he was sentenced to 21 years in prison, with credit for more than a year he spent in custody while awaiting the trial. Jung was finally released in 2014, though he would return to jail two years later for a parole violation. After he was freed, he revisited his old street in North Weymouth and found neighbors waiting on their porches to meet him. I'm quite sure all those people years ago would sit at bars or dinner tables or whatever and call me a no good son of a bitch, but time passes and things age, he said. And how could they not forgive an old 75 year old man? Jung, now living with his partner Rhonda, is enjoying a certain amount of celebrity. In real life, Jung is now finding his way in a world that has changed dramatically since the height of his smuggling business in the 1970s and early 80s when he was responsible for moving vast quantities of cocaine into the US for Escobar's notorious Medellin cartel. Even if Jung has no regrets about how he lived his life, he still believes there are lessons to be learned from it. That, he said, is what he's trying to do with the time he's got left. Don't forget to like this video and share, and so you don't miss out on new videos, subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications. Until next time.